In lesson seven, we are going to look at construction technique number five, which is constructing squares. So we're gonna be using a straight edge and a compass um, to construct squares. First, in your um, lesson, in your activity 7.1, the warm up, which is on page 46 in your student workbook, just gonna look at this and decide um, which one you think doesn't belong and why. Uh, there's really not a wrong answer to this. You can make a justification for all four of these for why they don't belong. So in class, a couple people came up with A doesn't belong because it's the only one that's shaded. B doesn't belong um, because it is the only one that doesn't have all the sides equal lengths. So it's the only one that's not equilateral. If you're looking on here versus your textbook, you can see it's also the only one that's outlined in blue. Um, part C or letter C, they said didn't belong because the perimeter adds up to four, where the other perimeters add up to eight. And then D um, was said that it doesn't belong because it's the only one that's not a four-sided figure or a quadrilateral. So whatever you saw, any of those, maybe you saw a different justification also, like part A doesn't is the only one that doesn't have a one. Part B is the only one with a three, something like that. All right, um, then let's take a look at what do we know about squares um, in to get ready for activity 7.2. So we're going to end up constructing at the bottom here, but let's take a look at what we know about squares first. And actually, um, in class, we looked at what we know about squares, but also rectangles and rhombuses. So we've got square, we've got rectangle, and we've got rhombus. So some things that people said that they know is that all of these have four sides. Okay, so all of these shapes are quadrilaterals. And somebody else said that they know that there are two sets of parallel lines. So the top and the bottom in each figure is parallel to one another, which is good. They're parallelograms. These little arrows show parallel. And in the rhombus, this one parallel to this one, this one parallel to this one. Other things that people said is that in um, the square, all four sides are the same. Okay, so the little tick marks say that all the sides are the same. Also said that that's a property of the rhombus, that all those sides are equal. In, um, a, in a rectangle, also that we've got 90 degree angles here. And same thing in a square. And also that the sides across from each other in the rectangle are equal to each other. So those are a couple of properties that um, people came up with. So again, we're going to be looking at the square. Um, so keeping in mind that we've got um, right angles here, which makes these two sides, well, all of the sides perpendicular. So any two sides next to each other perpendicular. And then we've also got um, all four sides are congruent. So taking a look down at the bottom of page 46, go ahead and um, try to use your compass and straight edge to see if you can construct a square, keeping in mind those properties. And you can pause the video and then come back um, to see how to do it. So... First things first, um, we are going to have to extend the bottom line. So we're gonna wanna be using AB as one of our side lengths. So we're gonna extend that. Now we said that we've got a perpendicular line. So what we're really trying to do is recreate the construction we did the other day where we constructed a perpendicular line through a point. So now we've got this green line and we're going to construct a perpendicular line through point B. So if you remember, that was making a circle of any size around B. Then opening to the intersection, okay, where that circle intersected the line. Drawing two circles around that. 
and then connecting. So that's going to get you a perpendicular line through B. So now we'll just redo that over at A so that we can get another perpendicular line, remembering that that will guarantee us those right angles that the square has. So any size circle around A, open your compass to the intersection, circle around each intersection, connect the intersections of those two circles. All right, so then we actually have to figure out where does the side end, okay? And we want the square to have the same size sides. So we want it to be equilateral. So if we go ahead and open our compass to the width of AB, then we'll be able to rotate it up and see where the side would end on that perpendicular line. And then you could just mark it with a point. So we know that that's where the next vertex is going to be because that guarantees that that side is the same as AB. And then again, we could do the same thing over on this perpendicular line. Okay, figuring out that this is where the next mark would go. Okay, so there's the next point and then you'd just be able to connect your square. So then, oh, I probably shouldn't choose green. Okay, so then you've got AB that you were given um, to start working with. So you've got AB and then B to this point and then A to this point and then just connect those and then you've got your square. Um, so if we typed out some instructions for that, so if you wanted to type out or write out instructions for that, so let me just mark, um, let me just call this point C and D. So kind of your idea here was that you were doing, um, so you created a circle. So let me get this written down here. Um, create a circle of any size around um, point B or with B as a center. Uh, then you opened to the intersection. And if you wanted to label the intersection, you certainly could. So these intersection points here is what I'm talking about. So open to the width of that intersection. So I'll just call that um, E and F just for this, um, for these directions. Let me make this smaller. Okay, so open to the intersections, or let's just write, create a circle. So create circle, a circle with center E, radius EF, so opening to that width, then create circle, a circle with center F and radius EF, so around those points then connect the intersections of circle E and circle F to get that perpendicular line. Then repeat, um, repeat these steps around A. So repeat steps one through four, whoops, one through three around point A. Then you'd open your compass to a length of AB and then measure that measure AB from point B 
on the perpendicular line. So point B and A on the perpendicular lines to get those marks. Then connect um, AB, um, BD, AC, and CD to create your square. That's kind of all the steps that we just did. Okay, so how do you know what you constructed was a square? So just write out, um, you can write out a sentence about why you think that you created a square. So you guaranteed that you had a right angle at A and B with those perpendicular lines. Then you measured the side lengths. And then when you connected, um, so that guaranteed that all of your sides were the same and that you had right angles. So then in, in 7, 3, you're just following these directions. So here's a square with BCD, okay, or sorry, here's a square ABCD with diagonal BD drawn in. So this is a diagonal, it just goes across the square. Construct a circle centered at A with radius AD. Okay, so we're gonna, let me do this. All right, so we're gonna do a centered at A open to a radius of AD. Draw a circle. Um, then it says construct a circle centered at C with a radius of CD. So centered at C, radius CD. Draw the diagonal AC. So connect points A and C together. And then come up with a conjecture about AC and BD. So conjecture, remember, is just a guess. So you're just coming up with a guess here of what you think the relationship is between this line and this line. So it looks like they're perpendicular. Okay, so it looks like they're perpendicular lines. If you remember the construction of a perpendicular bisector, it looks exactly like that. So it looks like we've got a, not only are they perpendicular to each other, but they would bisect each other. Then it says label the intersection of the diagonals. Okay, so where the diagonals cross as point E. Um, and then construct a circle at E with radius EB. So open to EB and then draw a circle there. How are the diagonals related to this circle? So remember, here's your diagonals. So you've got AC in blue and then BD in blue. So within that blue circle, it's going side to side through the center. So those are considered diameters. So then in the next part, when you flip over to the next page, it wants you to use your conjecture, which was remember that we had the diagonals or the diameters actually. Okay, so the diameters were perpendicular to each other. If we had what's called an inscribed square, so you see this square inside of that blue circle. So now they're giving us the blue circle and they want us to construct this square. So we can draw this diagonal anywhere we want. Okay, so the, or the first diameter anywhere we want because it just has to go through the center. So if I draw that one, now when I go to draw the second one, I need to ensure that it's perpendicular to this one. Then we're going to get the two diagonals and we'd be able to connect the points. So in order to create a perpendicular line, remember you draw a circle around the point. Okay, so we'll draw a circle around this point. Any size you want. Then open to the intersections. Okay, so open your compass to a width of the intersections. Draw a circle around each intersection. Okay, 
then connect those intersections and you'll end up with a perpendicular line. Make sure you extend it all the way to the other side. So now you've got those two perpendicular diagonals. Now you'll be able to draw in the square because now you've got the vertices of your square. So connect each of these intersection points and now you've got that square. All right, so looking at what we did, so you constructed an equilateral, so you've now constructed an equilateral triangle, a regular hexagon, and a square, each that can be inscribed in a circle. So each of these, so with the um, equilateral triangle and the hexagon, remember those were from the same construction where you drew all seven circles. Each of these is an example of a regular polygon. So regular polygons means equal sides and angles. So when we're looking at um, a regular triangle, it looks like this. A regular hexagon looks like this. Okay, and then we've got a regular quadrilateral, better known as a square, here. So you end up with um, all sides and angles being equal. So all of these sides being equal, all of these angles being equal. Okay, in a hexagon, all of these sides being equal. And then again, all those angles being equal. And in a square, same thing. And in a square, we know that these are 90 degree angles. So all equal sides, all equal angles. So starting with any of these shapes um, with construction, would starting with any of these help you make other regular polygons? So you can think about that. So again, that's what regular is. Inscribed, so remember this is inscribed, where all the vertices are on the edge of the circle. All right, and then for a cool down, use compass and straight edge moves to construct a square with segment BC as one of the sides. So remember that um, the starting, the first thing that you would do to start this is extend side BC. Then you would draw, whoops, then you would draw a circle around BC, any side length, or sorry, any size length, open to the intersection, circle around each intersection, connect the intersections to get that perpendicular line. And extend it up so that you can figure out how far up that one to go. You would then repeat this on B. Then you would open to the width BC and measure up that perpendicular line, keeping that opening so you could figure out where the point of the square needed to be. So then right here, and then you do it again on this one, and then you could connect all four. All right, so hopefully you now know how to construct a square inscribed in a circle and constructing a square using a given set of points. Remember, this one was getting the perpendicular diagonals or the perpendicular diagonals. And then this one was what we just did in the cool down. And then don't forget to do the check your understanding problems in your student workbook. You can find them on pages 50 to 52.